Welcome to lesson two of ancient world history, where we're taking a look at some of the multitude of cultures and civilizations that existed in the ancient world. Today's class is on Africa. Homo sapiens first evolved in Africa as early as 350,000 years ago. So it's not very surprising that some of the world's oldest and richest cultures have come from this enormous continent. The most famous of these cultures is of course ancient Egypt. Ancient Egyptian civilization began around 3100 BC. Ancient Egyptians heavily relied on the Nile River, which was the vital source of fertile soil in the region, allowing for the development of agricultural and even irrigation systems. The Egyptians created their own writing system, hieroglyphics, containing only pictures and symbols rather than characters. This type of writing is known as pictographic, with images representing words, whereas languages such as English is syllabic because its characters spell out words. The ability to read and write ancient Egyptian hieroglyphics was lost in time, and they were indecipherable to us until the discovery of the Rosetta Stone in 1799. It contains the same text in three languages, ancient Greek, Demotic, and hieroglyphics. It was literally a key to translating these ancient symbols. Ancient Egypt was a theocratic society, meaning that most aspects of life centered around religion. Ancient Egyptian religion was polytheistic, so the Egyptians worshipped many different gods that controlled different aspects of daily life. For example, Osiris was god of the living, Anubis was god of, the, of death, Ra was god of the sun, and Jeb was god of the earth. Ancient Egyptians had a strong belief in the afterlife and are perhaps most famous for their mummification rituals, which prepared the body and soul to enter the afterlife. And of course their pyramids, thought by most to be elaborate tombs for pharaohs. Politically, ancient Egypt was a monarchy ruled by a pharaoh. The crown typically passed by inheritance through the royal bloodline to the eldest son. However, atypically, daughters could also inherit, and ancient Egypt had many female pharaohs. The most famous of these are perhaps Hatshepsut and Cleopatra. The mysterious land of Punt was referred to by the ancient Egyptians from as early as 2500 BC as the God's Land. The Egyptians made many trade missions to Punt. Pharaoh Queen Hatshepsut in a 3,500-year-old temple near Thebes left us a stone book describing these expeditions. They included huge ships and thousands of men who returned with gold, myrrh, ebony, and exotic animals such as monkeys and leopards. Yet not a single ancient source mentions the location of Punt. In 2010, researchers analyzed a mummified baboon known to have been gifted to Egyptian pharaohs by Punt. The results showed that the monkey's DNA most closely matched animals found in Eritrea and Ethiopia. However, the exact location of Punt, the God's land, still remains lost to us. The Kingdom of Kush was south of Egypt in the land of Nubia, along the Nile River in what is now northern Sudan and southern Egypt. It was known as, the, as Upper Egypt because it's near the top of the Nile River. It received its name based on elevation, however, if you look at a map, it was actually south of Lower Egypt. The region of Nubia was an early cradle of civilization, producing several complex societies. The city-state of Kerma emerged between 2450 and 1450 BC, controlling an area as large as Egypt. The Egyptians knew Kerma as Kush and the two cultures engaged in intermittent warfare and trade. The royal families of the kingdoms of Egypt and Kush often intermarried, but Kushite culture was distinct. Egyptian art distinguished the people of Kush by their dress, appearance, and even method of transportation. The Kushites had their own language and script. They maintained a complex economy based on trade and industry. The Kushites developed a complex urban society with uniquely high levels of female participation at the time. In the 8th century BC, King Kashta became king of Upper Egypt, while his daughter, Amenertis, 
was appointed as chief priestess of Amun in Thebes. The monarchs of Cush ruled Egypt for over a century until the Assyrian conquest in 677 to 663 BC. Following the severing of ties with Egypt, the Cushite capital was located at Meroe. From the 3rd century BC, Cush was invaded and the Macedonians and Romans ruled for the next 600 years. It was taken back under control by the fourth Cushite king, but a century later, Meroe was destroyed by the kingdom of Aksum, marking the end of the kingdom of Cush. In the first century common era, the kingdom of Aksum had its capital at the city of Aksum in what is now the Tigre region and encompassed modern day Eritrea, northern Ethiopia, eastern Sudan, Yemen, and southern Saudi Arabia at its height. The kingdom was considered one of the ancient world's four great powers by 3rd century Persian prophet Mani, alongside Persia, Rome, and China. It was a major player on the ancient trade route between Rome and India, and used Greek language as well as Gez script, and even adopted Christianity in the mid-4th century. From the 9th century BC, along the Mediterranean coast of Africa, West of ancient Egypt in what is now Tunisia lay a Phoenician trade hub. Trade hub. The city-state of Carthage grew to be one of the most affluent cities of the ancient world, a powerful seafaring empire that dominated trade in textiles, including Tyrian purple, gold, silver, and copper. At its peak, its capital city housed nearly half a million inhabitants, and had a circular port with docking bays for 220 ships. The city-state eventually expanded to become an empire. The Carthaginian Empire, or Punic, the Latin name for Phoenicians, gained dominion around the Mediterranean and as far away as Spain. The empire flourished for hundreds of years and became a threat to ancient Rome. The Punic Wars, the fight for territory between the Romans and Carthaginians, lasted almost a hundred years. The Second Punic War most famously gave us Hannibal, a Carthaginian military leader who marched war elephants, northern African elephants, which are now extinct, over the Alps to invade Italy. The Third and Final Punic War ended with an almost three-year siege of Carthage in 146 BC. The city was almost totally destroyed and was rebuilt as a Roman city. Today, you can still visit the ruins of Carthage in the city of Tunis. Many thriving cultures came from Africa in the millennia after the ancient era, which is focused on in this course. Civilizations such as Zimbabwe, Ghana, and Mali have all had major cultural impacts on the world. Join us next time for an ancient history overview of the land of India.